first when faced with temptations. Think about the life that's in expectation. Rehearse the dual effects before the act of compulsion. Cause ignorance and stupidity never solve the situation. It says do drugs, do sex, drugs and violence ease your burden. We think, isn't there a better solution? Despite the two might to peer pressure, think, cause when two wrongs combine, no one ever wins. Think first before being critical and abusive. Apologize, seek peace, and don't make excuses. The days that um, we had back then, the early, the late 50s, early 60s, there were days of poverty. And uh, everybody were practically on the same level. But those were days of honor, where there's an abundance that people have, but the dignity is of the low end. In the early days, in the 50s and 60s, many young persons went to Sunday school. In my day growing up, the Sunday schools were packed with young boys and young girls. Nowadays, they scarcely want to go to church, much less Sunday school. Maybe we need to take it back to the old days when we to our grandmothers and our grandfathers where it was so strict and the parents, the kids had to abide by the parents' rules. So hopefully, we'll have a change and they will realize that it's, this stuff is getting ridiculous and out of control. We've lost that aspect of the village is a parent to the child. And now it's everybody for themselves. We have a complex issue in that one, we have a breakdown in the family structures that has not passed on the values of being a kitchen that we, the generation beforehand, have had the privilege of having so taught to us. Secondly, there is a problem of instant gratification amongst our young people, whereby the values of hard work have been eroded and they feel that to get what they want, they can get it swiftly and without understanding consequences. You must have a system to respond to the criminals and to deal with them, but at the same time, we have to continue the proactive approach, stopping people from getting into crime before they get in. And those who get in, trying to help them not to offend. Students are now realizing that counseling really does help. We look at like how to manage your anger. We look at how to deal with stress that they're confronted with. We look at how to resolve conflicts and things like that. So sometimes they'll come in in a mood really maybe angry or even aggressive and by the time they leave it's, it's more or less changed. We have to deal with some girl fights because there's always girl fights which could be based on really anything. Something as trivial as you know somebody spoke to somebody's boyfriend or you know somebody um, gave somebody a bad disrespectful look. <laughs> We, we are realizing more and more that students are sneakingly involved in gangs. It's, sometimes it's sort of subtle, but sometimes you see it appearing by um, the colors that they want to bring inside their pockets. But you also have to remember that not only has the economy changed in the last 10 years, but their access to information has changed. So a lot of the problems that we're having with delinquent behavior is coming out of those very same changes. So they have access to more internet, access to more television. So a lot of our delinquency is coming out of the access that they have. So while the economy has changed, other things have changed. So it's finding a balance for us between the good that's come in and the bad that's come with it. Young people commit crime because they're in gangs. The reason why these gangs happen because some of these young people don't get enough love at home from their parents. If you look at the gang members, or the gang leaders, they have on bling, a lot of gold chain, nice clothes, and nice shoes, and kids are attracted to that. It's very difficult to get out of. I've never been in, so I don't know how do you get out of it, but the first step is to find out what's going on in terms of being in a gang and what that gang does and what it represents. Then you have to find out who you can talk to and who you can trust and get information from. Because if you go back to the same gang members and tell them you want to get out, it would be a, a serious problem. We have to understand that when a child is first engaged with a gang, 
they are coming in at low self-esteem and then they develop high self-esteem or they just get a reputation of having high self-esteem. So then it is difficult for them to leave that which gave them that self-confidence. If you do not trust certain people and certain police officers, there must be somebody in, the, in society, in, in the community, who each of us will trust, be it a pastor or a teacher or whoever. Give that information to someone who you trust and be strong and give that evidence because if you become the victim, you would also wish that someone would give that evidence and be that witness. We are in the, the business of crime prevention. A comprehensive program is developed for dealing holistically with the, 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 the victims of crime and as well as the criminals themselves. And temptation is real and the force of temptation is not idle. And people will fall by the way. And we are saying that in as much as we hope that they don't fall, we have to be prepared when they fall to give them a chance to stand again on their feet. And, and it is the chance to stand again that very often we fail them in. Being a prisoner is not all about bad and looking at us as to be a diabolic villain. That's you know, we could see with mistakes and we need some aid, you know. I'm here from since um, 2001, early. Yeah, I'm, I'm serving a um, life sentence in prison. My failure to me was, um, his guidance and so Even my brother came to jail and all. And that's, that was totally a disaster for me, you know what I mean? He came for the same kind of charge I hear on. Terrible. And I weep to myself and say, man, oh, like, oh, I didn't set an example for him. He followed me. Just one elderly lady who said to him, surely you can do something better with all that energy you have. And you know, just that in that one moment, of encouragement and challenge, he began to think of his life in a different way. I'm spending 20 years in prison. In life on a whole, not just to the youths, but to everyone, I find sin is the problem. And sin directs us into all other avenues of evil on earth. So the youths, them need to be grafted into a righteous path of life. Um, I made a choice to drink and to smoke and suddenly I get intoxicated and found myself in the wrong place doing the wrong thing at the wrong time. So it's not a matter of anyone who caused me to be here but myself, my, cho my choices that I made in life. That religious influence seemed to not only act as a motivator but in some ways it acts as a sort of inhibitor you have to use enforcement, you have to stop and search, you have to arrest, you have to take to prison, you have to take to court, you have to just use enforcement. But that is only one half of the answer. The other half is that you have to use coercive measures. You have to be able to reach out to the community and to these young persons who are getting themselves in trouble and help to guide them along the right road. We have recently, uh, about a year ago, from a police boys club in the Federation. As long as I gave an instruction and you failed to follow that instruction, you're out. I don't want any treating. This is just um, maybe a, a psychological warfare for self-esteem, etc. And so we believe that the programs that we have put forward, the initiative, the mentorship programs, the, um, the, the boys brigade, the police boys brigade, and um, the church groups all working together that we can reshape the way in which the philosophies, the values, the way in which um, the young people are now thinking 
in terms of uh, their inclination towards crime and violence. And we also have a cadet or uh, a youth drum corps, again all designed to involve um, young people, keep them engaged so they won't have time to get themselves in mischief. As youth growing up and as an athlete, I think going, you know, doing sports, whether it's track, football, you know, basketball, once they have something to do, you know, other than just being on the streets and probably smoking and finding yourself getting into gangs, you know, you'll have, you know, at least you'll have to, you know that you'll have to probably go to train or do bas basketball practice or track practice and it's some, you know, with doing sports, you have to be so, so disciplined. So you don't have time at all to even get into the gangs or be with bad company. People want something to belong to and that's where people try to get into, involved with gangs because they want to feel that comfort zone where they have people surrounding them and sports can do that for you. You can have your teammates there for you, you can build a lot of friendship skills where team is concerned. A lot of people don't understand what it means to be on a team. Team is not just about the sport itself. Young people think they're going to live forever. They're strong. They can do anything. But if they base these feelings on a background of discipline and the caring, when they get to mature years, these values will impose themselves. It's a little bit like uh, being made to go to Sunday school when you're a youngster. When you get to adolescence and young personhood, you forget about those things for a while. But later in life, the practice of going to church revisits you. The same is true for discipline. The same is true for caring. Don't follow bad company, pick your friends them wisely. Don't get caught up in this blood sting. Ain't nothing good. Tired. When, when they get in at that age where they, they think they know everything and they want to act like they know everything, parents can't give up. You have to keep working at your kids, you have to keep telling them how much you love them, how much you care about them, and keep telling them what they can do. Because if, if you're not there telling the child, yes, you, you can be your own mechanic, you can be your own carpenter, you, you could be your own boss, they feel like there's no help. Just remember the Bible principle. Love thy neighbor as thyself. You don't want to get hurt, don't try to hurt anyone. Let's go, ready? Let's go, one, two, three, four, five. Yeah. Prison life is not good. And the way things are happening with violence, you can only end up two places, in prison or in the grave. So parents, guardians, uncles and aunts, grandparents, big brothers, big sisters, the entire community. Let us take care of our children. And it's only by showing love, we will receive love. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah.